Okay, so in this video, we'll be looking into uh, one of the most commonly used page replacement policy, which is LRU, which is a short of uh, least recently used policy. Okay, it has been commonly used in almost anywhere across the whole computer uh, stack, ranging from CPU cache to memory cache to hardware based TLB and to you know software implemented. Um, memcached, a database in memory cache, whatever, right? So the, the high level idea is it tries to use a history to make a prediction into the future. It basically uses the recent history data, the recent past, as an approximation of the near future, okay? Because we're always talking about online. So this is another online algorithm instead of offline, where we have the perfect future knowledge. So try trying to approximate the offline is by using history data to make prediction. And the idea is to try to identify the data that has not been used in the longest period and try to identify these kind of data and we treat this kind of data as the, the, the most useless, the least useful data, um, and then we use these as eviction when there's no uh, no room left within the the limited capacity of the the memory cache okay so based on that if you take a look at again the the same old example workload um so here's the table uh where we we again do this uh cache-based simulation study and it has four columns, and the right leftmost column is basically the workload pattern, the access, the memory uh, references, okay? It starts with zero, followed by one, two, zero, and so on. And uh, as always, the first three are composed remises, okay? And here, um, if you take a look at the, the rightmost column, the resulting in memory cache state because we're talking about least recently used LRU. So it, it always, so this algorithm always keep track of uh, the, the two ends of this uh, linked list, of this, um, um, all the data that has been linked, linked together. And one end is called the LRU end, the least recently used end, which is the, life, the leftmost. And the right end, this part is essentially called the most recently used. Um, okay, so what it does is it always, it always evict the least recently used item to make new room for the most recent to, to, to accommodate new requests, new insertion, okay? So the next request is zero because zero has been already cached, even though it is right now the pointed to, pointed to by the least recently used pointer, but it is still within the cache. So there will be a, there would be a, a hit, right? So then if you take a look at one, okay? Since one is already in the cache as, as well, so there's another hit, okay? So basically you would need to update the, 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 the LRU list a little bit to reflect the, the state update, right? Because you always need to maintain the least recently used pointer position. And in, given that there's one reuse, there's one access hitting that on that particular item, you need to move the position of the item from the least recently used position all the way to the rightmost, which is a, a most recently used item, okay? So over here, LRU. So given access to zero, and right now we need to move zero all the way to the right. right. So one should be, uh, a zero should be over here. And we just push the, the, the rest of the, the queue towards the you know, left, okay? And then the next axis is one, LRU, okay? And then you try to move one all the way to the most recently used position and just push the left who push the rest to the left, okay? So we end up with the LRU list from the leftmost to the rightmost, two, zero, one, okay? Okay, the rest, uh, you just do the same 
you just apply the same policy to the rest of the items within the workload. Okay, so, and over here, two is the leftmost. And the next one is three, right? So we're gonna evict two as well. So the next axis is three. There would be a miss, right? Over here, which one to evict? is of course the the item pointed to by the least recently used pointer so we try to evict two over here okay and and we push the rest rest items uh, by one more slot towards the left okay zero one and we insert the new item to the most recently used position which is three okay and then over here zero a zero there will be a hit so there's nothing to be evicted out okay but we just do the same thing and move zero from left to to the right and then do the rest okay and we as a result we end up with a total number of uh, five misses in this case um so how are you stack implementation um so how to implement how are you using a stack data structure is you could kind of organize different pages in a doubly linked list and we essentially using this doubly linked list to implement this stack data structure and whenever there's a page that gets referenced or that gets accessed we just simply move this page to the top of this list meaning right now this page is the most recently used okay and uh, for whatever operation, it just requires a few pointer manipulation uh, in order to, you know, um, adapt the, you know, position, uh, adapt the, the, the where, where the least recent use and most recent use pointer pointing to, okay? And there's no need to, to do a linear uh, search or a linear scan uh, for each and every replacement operations because we only care about the, uh, whenever you want to do eviction, we just care about uh, what is pointed to by the least recently used pointer and evict that out okay and uh, here this slide shows an example of how um, to use the, uh, the stack data structure to try approximate LRU and this in this example this is the reference string which is a workload okay so, and uh, this snapshot, this is how this stack looks like, basically how this virtual memory looks like. Um, before um, this point A over here. So before point A is before uh, reference to ver uh, physical frame number seven uh, gets accessed, okay? And this is after B, right? Uh, which is, um, you're asked how this stack would be looking like after you know uh, pointer uh, uh, after point B. So before uh, point A, um, this assume this is the most frequently used pointer. It points to the the top of the stack, and the least recently used pointer that points to the bottom, meaning this is the this pointer points to the victim that would get evicted if you need to make the page replacement this year okay so after step after b how it looks like is you just simply move um um the 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 data that gets accessed which is physical frame number seven and to the very top okay and uh, keep rest of the same uh, keep rest of the, uh, the items same without changing them so the next one is two 
one, um, zero, and four. Okay, four is still the least recently used. And right now, the most recently used thing is physical freight number seven. Okay, so this is how the step looks like after point B. Okay, just move seven all the way to the most recently used position, as we've already uh, shown in the previous slide, okay? All right, um, so regarding hardware implementation, because if you wanna faithfully implement LRU, it requires sophisticated hardware support, which requires a lot of you know, state tracking because you need to maintain some state, right? Which definitely involves too much performance overhead or a hardware design complica uh, com complication, right? So we don't wanna do that. A simple trick that we could do we could still implement, you know, or approximate LRU within the hardware is to use a so-called clock algorithm, where for each and every physical frame, we maintain a single bit, which is called the reference bit, right? Or the use bit. And whenever there's an access or there's a reuse uh, to that particular physical frame, we just flip the reference bit from zero to one, meaning, the page has been referenced in the near future, okay? And uh, for those pages that haven't been accessed in a while in the, in, the, in, the, in the recent past, it's likely that it still has a reference bit of zero. So those pages, those physical frames with reference bit of zero are the victims uh, that is likely to be evicted, but it depends on you know, where exactly the pointer is, okay, the cursor is, because the cursor just performs a linear search, linear scan through the whole namespace and try to identify the very first victim with a reference bit of zero and, and just simply evict that, okay? So this is how the so-called clock, clock algorithm approximate LRU, okay? Because of that, we lose some important information because we don't exactly know the order of the use, right? Because this is the state information. Everything is a trade-off. This is a trade-off. We uh, this is the uh, uh, some state information that we don't want. We 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 cannot keep track of using this simple approximation approach. But the the good side is um, it is really fast and it incurs. Uh, nearly uh, zero negligible runtime performance overhead, okay? So, uh, the next couple of, the next couple of uh, pages, it uh, provide, it shows you the animation about how exactly this clock LRU algorithm look, uh, works. So here we're looking at the physical memory and assume the cursor, the clock hand, is pointing to the very first physical frame. And uh, each and every physical page, physical frame, it maintains an extra a bit, uh, which is the reference bit or use bit. Uh, if you take a look at this snapshot, so the first two pages, they have the reference, the use bit of one, and the third one has a reference bit of zero. So it's likely to, to get picked by the, the clock algorithm as the, the very first victim if there's no uh, memory space and uh, the operating system has to make the eviction decision. Okay, so in this case, let's assume the memory is full and it tries to evict the page to make the room. Okay, you just scan your clock hand uh, towards the right direction. Okay, scan through this di direction. And after done with uh, passing, scanning, a certain, a particular page, make sure to flip the use bit from one to zero, okay? And then um, scan through the next one, next one and also flip the uh, use bit from one to zero. And over here, stop at the third physical frame. And it turns out its use bit is already zero. So this one becomes a victim. Evict page two because it has not been recently used. 
and why it has not been recently used is by examining its use bit. It turns out to be zero. So that at least tells something, right? Something that in the near, the recent past, it hasn't, hasn't been really reused. Okay, so we pick two as a victim. And then we replace it with a new item, which is, you know, page four. Okay, and then we keep scanning this clock hand. And uh, over here, let's assume at this point of time, page zero gets accessed. So whenever page get accessed, you need to flip its use bit and reset a use bit from zero, if it, if it already zero, into one, meaning it has just been accessed, okay? And uh, at this point of time, again, the memory is full and it tries to make another efficient, efficient decision to make the room for accommodating a new request. Okay, it turns out the second page has the, um, the, the reference bit of zero, so let's see. Okay, so after done with scanning the fourth one and looping back, okay, you flip it from one to zero. Okay, so it's, tempor it's temporarily safe for now, I mean the fourth one. And then moving the cursor from all the way towards the right. And it stop over here, it tries to evict page one because page one has a reference speed of zero. That also implies it has not been recently used. Okay, just evict it and bring in new data, which is page number five. Okay. And then this whole procedure, this whole algorithm just works like the following. Okay, exactly like, um, this is how, how it works. Okay, so summary. So in, in this final slide, um, I'd like to give you a brief summary about how each and every uh, page replacement policy works. Uh, the, the, the page replacement policy that we, we've been talking about. The very first one is the most basic one, which is FIFO, first in, first out. So why it might work? Because you know the one brought in the longest ago is the one that we're not using now. So this is some reason that supports why it might work in practice. Sometimes it might not work. Why? Because the FIFO doesn't really have any intelligence. It doesn't try to preserve or doesn't try to memorize the history. It doesn't try to make prediction into the future as well. So because there's no real information to tell if it, a particular page is being used or not. So it suffers Bolady's anomaly, remember that? So what exactly belated is anomaly? So assuming we're using FIFO and a cache with relatively a bigger uh, space capacity tends to perform worse than a cache with smaller capacity. This is called belated anomaly. And belated anomaly is uh, you know, caused by a few different factors, correlated factors. And one of the factors is the 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 workload is tricky. The workload is kind of you know semi sequential. It has this sequential pattern. And another factor that might cause that that is likely to cause Palladius anomaly under FIFO is because the um, the, the the capacity of the the cache is slightly smaller than the size of the working set size. And we've talked about the definition of working set size. Okay. So this is FIFO. And the second policy that we've been talking about is random. So how random works is just to randomly pick an item and evict it out. And sometimes it turns out this non-intelligence, namely random policy, works better than FIFO or even better than the seemingly um, intelligent algorithm, which is LRU, okay? And then next we've talked about a Bolady's optimal algorithm, which is which is the only one, the only offline algorithm that we've been talking about so far, right? So Bolady's optimal is based on a very critical assumption, which is is based on the assumption that 
the algorithm has perfect future knowledge. We we have we know per we know about the future. Okay. Uh, given this assumption, Belady's offline optimal algorithm is not practical in real cases because we cannot predict the future in, in, in practice in real world cases. However, it's still useful because it could be used as a best case baseline for performance comparison purposes. Okay, so this is Belady's offline optimal algorithm. And uh, lastly, we've talked about least recently used, which is one of the most commonly used page replacement policies. So its intuition is, even though we cannot look into the future, but let's look back at the recent past and we use the past information, the historical data to make a good guess towards the future. So this is the intuition behind LRU. And it, it turns out this simple heuristic works out well in practices, in real world examples, in real world applications actually, okay? So how it works is the pages used most recently tends to be, to be the one that will be used again, that will be reused again. So this also kind of captures well this so-called principle of uh, date locality. And remember, uh, we've been talking about these two different kinds of date locality, spatial locality together with uh, temporal locality. And how are you trying to capture both of them? Okay.